Just before we get into today's story, I want to say thank you to Shayna Gitnick, uh, I hope I pronounced your name right, who suggested that I cover this story on my community tab. I do read all the comments on there, so if you want a story covered, please feel free to leave your suggestion there. Thank you. In April of 2019, the bustling neighbourhood of South Lake Union in Seattle was struck by a disaster when a crane collapsed, destroying everything in its path. In the blink of an eye, a normal afternoon turned into chaos that would only be resolved this year. Sadness and grief soon turned into anger after the investigation found that the tragedy was totally avoidable. This is the Seattle Crane Collapse disaster. In the state of Washington, north of downtown Seattle, lies the bustling neighborhood of South Lake Union. Since Amazon arrived in 2007 and called South Lake Union its home, the suburb has seen a massive transformation, becoming one of the most tech-based areas in the whole of the United States. Over the past 10 years, money has pumped into the area. Bars and shops have appeared, rundown areas of the neighborhood have been transformed, and fancy new buildings have gone up. One of the busiest roads in the heart of the city is Mercer Street, which carries an average volume of 38,000 vehicles a week and is 1.9 miles long. In 2016, Google decided to move from Fremont to South Lake Union and bought a space to construct their office on Mercer Street. The plan was to create new office buildings, which were six stories tall and 60% bigger than their campus in Kirkland. This was an exciting project for Google, but also for the residents of South Lake Union with the promise of new jobs. Construction began in 2017, with plans to finish the project by 2019. This brings us up to the 27th of April 2019. Construction at this point had been going smooth and they were nearly done with the project. That day, the construction's team job was to dismantle the crane that they had been using whilst working on the office. The day was anything but calm though, Heavy winds were blowing and it was reported to last throughout the day. The team went through with the disassembly process anyway as the wind wasn't a threat if they followed safety protocols. However, at approximately 3.28pm, a huge gust of wind blew the crane over, causing it to collapse onto Mercer Street. One witness stated, It was terrifying. I looked up, the wind was blowing really strong. Half of it was flying down sideways onto the building, the other half fell down on the street, crossing both lanes of traffic. Sections of the crane fell onto the roof of the Google building, and some fell onto the traffic below, striking six vehicles. The scene was devastating and chaotic. The collapse of the crane led to the death of four people. Two of the victims were iron workers working on the crane. These were Andrew Yodder, who was 31 years old, and Travis Corbett, who was 33 years old. Both were former US Marines. The two other victims died after the debris fell onto traffic. These were Sarah Wong, a 19-year-old freshman, and Alan Justad, who was 71 years old and retired. Four other people were injured. Mercer Street was then closed for the weekend. They have moved that largest chunk of crane, the uh, superstructure there, and they are working on moving the cab right now that is behind that SPD vehicle, but really a terrifying situation here this afternoon, and many people witnessed it while some ran to help. The sound came first. I heard a crash, kind of like thunder. Then the fury. Then I heard the most sirens that I've ever heard, and I knew something had probably fallen down. Holly Kirchner uh, was around the corner and arrived at Mercer Street to this. I see a huge chunk of crane that looks like it might be lying on a few cars and the most emergency vehicles I've ever seen. The construction crane came tumbling down right into traffic. There's crushed cars underneath part of the crane, and like I said, a mess. Leaving many people. It doesn't look good. With stories of having just passed underneath. So what caused the collapse? At first, the overwhelming conclusion was that the heavy wind was to blame, but this wasn't the case. Following a six month investigation by the Washington Department of Labor and Industries, it was discovered that the companies didn't disassemble the crane according to the manufacturer's instructions. Going against manufacturer's procedures, 
workers prematurely took out pins securing the crane's mast. The investigators said, with the pins removed, the tower was significantly weakened, making it susceptible to the 45 plus miles per hour wind gust that toppled it. Over 50 pins were wrongly removed from the crane. Three companies were fined. This includes Morrow Equipment, the owner of the crane, which approved for the removal of the pins contributing to the collapse. GLY Construction were fined for not having qualified supervisors on the site at the time of the disassembly, and Northwest Tower Crane Services for not following procedures ensuring workers understood their duties. Fast forward to this year in March, after a wrongful death lawsuit was filed, a King Count jury awarded over $150 million to the families of those who died and were injured when the crane collapsed. They stated that the incident was totally avoidable. Of the $150 million, the Wong family received roughly $72 million, whilst the Justad family received $52. Three individuals hurt in the incident also received a portion of the remaining funds. We now know the identities of all four victims of the collapse, learning late today that one of them is a former city planner for Seattle. Mayor Jenny Durkin says 71-year-old Alan Justeb was a dedicated longtime employee with the city planning department. Two experienced iron workers also died in the collapse. 33-year-old Travis Corbett was a Marine before moving to Oregon. He was married for about a year and was planning to go on his honeymoon in a few months. His colleague, 31-year-old Andrew Yoder, was also a U.S. Marine. Students at Seattle Pacific University say they're relying on one another to try to overcome their grief over the death of Sarah Wong, who was a freshman on campus. In a few weeks, one of the clubs Sarah was in has a performance, and they plan to make it full of joy and celebration of her life. Seattle Pacific University released a statement after the incident saying, we are deeply saddened to confirm that one of our students passed away in the crane accident in Seattle on April the 27th. Sarah Wong was in the car on Mercer Street when the crane fell. She was a freshman with an intended major in nursing and lived on campus. While we grieve the sudden and tragic loss of our precious student, we draw comfort from each other, our strong community of faith and God's presence within this time of sorrow. We ask that the community join us in praying for Sarah's family and friends during this difficult time. Alan Justad is remembered as being a loyal and honourable public servant to the city of Seattle. Andrew Yoder was a man who took pride in his job. He is remembered by his family. And Travis Corbett is remembered by his wife, who continues to grieve for him to this day. I hope the victims' families have found some kind of peace. And as always, thank you for watching.